Hi, and welcome to How to Be a River Roundup Stonefly Search Leader and Collector with HRWC. My name is Paul Steen. I'm a watershed ecologist with the Huron River Watershed Council. Of course, you probably already know that if you're watching this because this is a online refresher of a leader training that you have already attended. And why are we having you do this? Well, we want our leaders and collectors to refresh every three years on the procedures of the River Roundup so that we know that we're always uh, in line with each other doing the same techniques and procedures and that our data quality is maintained at the highest possible levels. So what we're gonna do with this video is start out with how to be a leader, then we're gonna talk about how to be a collector, and then we'll have you um, watch a decontamination video and take an online quiz and you'll be set. The whole thing shouldn't take more than about 20 minutes. So here we go. First of all, what is the leader? Well, the leader during a river roundup is the person who is in charge of the team. You wanna keep everyone safe, keep everyone together, keep everyone on task and uh, doing the job correctly. So to start off, when you come to the new center where the HRWC offices are, and you will go in the conference rooms and meet your team. Now, this is an important moment for the leader to be introducing yourself to your team, introduce your team to each other, and try to get people comfortable and uh, happy. You're probably going to have a lot of new people on your team who don't know what's going on. So anything you can tell them, uh, to smooth that transition will make their experience that much better. Eventually, Jason and I will kick things off, welcome everybody, and we'll talk for a little bit. After all of that is done, it will just be you and your team, and you'll start talking about heading out to your monitoring sites. So before you leave, make sure you fill out the little team form that's about this size, and it. On it, you can record all the names of the people on your team because sometimes teams get changed last minute. We want to make sure we know who is going where. And you can give that to either me or Jason. And then you'll oversee carpooling and driving. So there'll be printed driving directions that you can give to everyone. You want to make sure that everyone knows which site you're going to. Um, you can run through the directions with them, talk about who's going to ride in what car, make sure at everyone is on your team is going along for the ride, right? Don't leave anyone behind. You'll get to your site and the job of the leader when you first get there is gather your pickers together and show them what they should be doing uh, with the white trays and picking the insects out of the sample. Show them how to use the forceps, the spoons, the pipettes, uh, encourage them to Take anything that's moving, put it in those those white or those alcohol jars. Um, make sure you add a little bit of water to the trays to get things swimming. Remind people to turn rocks over and turn leaves over so that they're able to find things hiding on the bottoms of those. Um, if there's if you have any bark or logs, you know, make sure you look on all sides of that. Insects love hiding there. In a little bit of time, they'll be good to go and working happily away. Now, one of the jobs of the leader is to keep an eye on the clock because the collector can't do this because their hands will be busy in the creek. So it's up to you. You want to let your collector collect for 35 to 45 minutes. And the reason there is a time range there is because some sites are quite easy to collect while others are can be pretty challenging. So that time frame gives the collector enough time to sample across the entire 300 foot section of the monitoring site. Now, after your collector is done, there still will be probably lots of white trays and debris to go through yet. And it's okay to have your pickers continue on even after your collector is finished. What we ask for, though, is that from start to finish, the whole picking time 
doesn't go above 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, wrap things up and get moving on. And in that time frame of that 60 minutes, have your pickers keep it all big and small, although there are caveats, of course. There's certain things we're not collecting from the water. If you find fish, you can return that. If you find crayfish, return them. Also, we are no longer keeping clams, mussels, snails of any size. And this is because there's too high of a chance of collecting threatened and endangered species. And that's not something we're willing to do. So clams, mussel, snails, return those to the river. What does that leave? Well, pretty much anything else, insects, crustaceans like scuds, worms, leeches, uh, those are all the things that you are picking out of the white trays and putting in the jars of alcohol. The leader is also going to be filling out the data sheets for each site. The data sheets are very straightforward, contain information like what site are you at, uh, who are who are you there with, uh, who's a leader, who's a collector, uh, what did you find that you did not keep? You know, if you find fish, that's where you, that's the chance to to say that that you found them. Um, there's some data quality questions on the back. Did you spill your alcohol? Are you sure you're at the right site? That kind of thing. So that's a leader's job. Also attached to the data sheet are these little labels that say the site name, and you can put those directly into the ethanol jars. That way the jars don't get confused with each other. And then in your binder, you'll have evaluations that you can give to every team member. And we always love to hear what people think about the event and if they have any suggestions for improvement. So leaders get those evaluations filled out. They either can give them back to you directly and you can turn them into us or perhaps they're coming back to the office anyway and then they can turn it in themselves. And overall, through the whole thing, just help these people, especially the new ones, feel comfortable, uh, help them have fun, and help them learn. If you have things to teach them, please do. The more that, that you can share with them about what you're doing and why you're doing it and talk about the Huron River Watershed Council, the better the chance that those people will want to come back as leaders and collectors in the future. And that is what's going to carry this program forward uh, into the decades to come. Now, let's talk about how to be a collector. First of all, collectors, no one's going to remember your gear but you, right? Don't forget your net, your waders. Remember, we have those long gloves that you can go all the way up your shoulder that, to, to keep you dry. So don't leave the building without it. That's your responsibility. When you get to the site, grab a water sample right away after you get your waders on. Um, you get the water when it's nice and clean before it gets churned up and that gives us the best sample to do our conductivity measurements. Then grab something fast and hand it up to, to the leader on the bank because the leader needs to show these pickers what to do. So if you can grab a big rock or a log or something that just you can grab right away, that will help them get started so that they can start teaching. And then once that's done, start the official collecting. You want to head upstream. Uh, you have about a 300 foot reach to cover in that time frame, And you're going to be looking for all these different habitat types. And the reason you look for different habitats is that different bugs like to live in different places. And the more habitats you search, the better your sample is going to be. So let's talk about those so they're fresh in your mind. If you see riffles or other moving water, that is where you use that shuffle technique. So plant your net down on the substrate, shuffle your feet, move the rocks, and that the water current will force that debris through the net and you will capture lots of stuff. That is a great technique to use and use it liberally quite a bit. Um, 
because you can find a lot doing that method. You don't always need to use your net though. If you see big rocks, if you see piles of leaves that have all collected against an obstruction, uh, logs that, that are reasonable to lift, you can pick those materials up and give it directly to the people on the bank. And you can find lots of insects on big material like that. Your creek will also probably have quiet areas, pools, uh, the margins of the stream where the water isn't flowing fast, uh, areas of muck. Uh, you should sample those too, but usually don't sample more than once or twice in those areas. Um, when you go to check them out, you may see something like water striders on the surface. And that's the first thing you should try to get. Um, some, some bugs like water striders like the quiet water and that's where they hang out. And then when you use your net to get the substrate, only scrape off a little bit of that muck. You don't want deep muck samples. You won't find much and they are miserable to sort through for your pickers. So just take one or two samples of mucky areas and then you can leave those areas alone after that. On the edges of the creek, you will also see undercut banks, vegetation and roots. Those are the areas where you use your net frame to scrape and to dislodge, get things into your net. Um, and that, those nets are pretty strong. They have this heavy metal frame, so you can use that to really scrape those uh, surfaces, and dislodge things for your, for your collection. All right, everyone will be wrapping up after, after an hour of picking. And then it's time to decontaminate. This is a relatively new thing that we're doing. The goal is to prevent any invasive species spread from site to site. And we have a special video for you to watch that goes through the procedures of decont decontamination. So we'll, we'll show you that link in a moment. Uh, the key is to do this decontamination after your first site. That's because we don't want anything spread to your second site. After the second site, you'll come back to our offices anyway, and then we'll be able to clean it with a hose, and then we will air dry uh, all of the equipment for a long time, so things uh, will be fully decontaminated with a long air dry. So far, most of what I've been talking about refers directly to river roundups. Now, stonefly searches are very similar, but there's a few key differences. First of all, you only need to sample 20 to 30 minutes during a stonefly search. It's January, it's gonna be cold. Uh, we want everyone to stay safe. So 20 to 30 minutes should be sufficient to look for stoneflies. And you're only keeping those. And you really wanna concentrate on riffles and leaf packs because those are the microhabitats that stoneflies prefer. So that's where you're probably going to find them in that 20 to 30 minute time period. Otherwise, the procedures are much the same. So just remember those couple of things and you will be set. All right, well, that wraps up this training. We're gonna have you watch a decontamination video now at this link. After that, there is a 10 question quiz to show that you've paid attention, also to get your name so that we know that you uh, successfully completed this online training refresher. And you are set for three years. We'll write you again soon and have you, have you do it again. Uh, until then, we appreciate the time you've taken to make sure that our data quality stays as high as possible. And we will see you again really soon at our next collection event. Thanks so much and take care.